defeated against Manchester City. Top of the table clash. Eight points separate these two going into that game at Old Trafford. Is it must win for United, Craig? Do we go and say that much? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Eight points. I mean, all right, a draw keeps it where it is, clearly, but it's that's still a huge gap to, to peg back. And if you are going to do it, and they City don't look like dropping points against any other teams, although they've had a couple of tighter games recently, I think that's that'll it's going to shake itself off. I've been not quite at the best. Those teams have been sitting in. So yeah, at home at Old Trafford, you got to get it done. Do you agree, boys? This is a must-win for United. Uh, at home, yes, without question. It's it's a must-not lose, is it not? I, I mean, I, if they lose, it's done. Oh, but the draw's okay in your opinion. Well, it just it, it means they're still eight points behind, but but at least they're still in with a fighting chance. I mean, and I, and I don't see them getting anything, by the way. But I just see it as a must-not lose. And unfortunately, I think Mourinho might see it like that as well. So, you know what you're getting ready I, I for. Just, I just feel at home, United, United have to win. Eight points is a gap right now, closest to five. You're still asking a lot of everybody else in, in the league, which nobody's really shown that they, they can really push, push City all the way. I know they've had a couple of close calls. But even five points is, is, a, is a big gap for, for United to make up, both of them into the latter stages of the Champions League as well. I just don't see how, how a draw does Manchester United. You said you know what Jose is going to do. In a sense, you think he's going to park the bus. Well, he's not going to park the bus. Well, that's he's going to do, do the same thing he did at Arsenal last yeah. week. But he's going to find a line, right? But it's going to be deeper than you would expect Manchester United to do at home. I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm sitting here trying to think. I can't remember ever seeing a, a Jose Mourinho team that was ever set up to go out and must win. I don't remember it, regardless of whoever he's coached. So there's no way he's going to do anything other than not pat the boss. He'll, he'll start off defending high, and then after 20 minutes, it'll be the same as, uh, as against Arsenal, and they'll end up deep. I, I, the big difference is there's no Pogba, who was so key against Arsenal. Yeah, but so were a couple of other players, and so was David De Gea. You know what I mean? So... Look, he's not going to want to open himself up, is he? And let City play that fantastic football, those one-twos, mm. that first-time passing between four and five players, and that movement. If he leaves those spaces, he knows they'll get punished, right? He won't get away with... He didn't get away with it at Arsenal last week. He, he's, he, the tactics and how it all panned out worked. But he won't get away with City having as much good possession in the final third and opportunities and expect just expecting David De Gea, as good as he is, Shaq, just to have another game like sure. I mean, he might have another game like that, but the chances are they're probably going to be more clinical yeah, than that. You give City 33 mm. shots and I, score more than one goal. Yeah, <laughs> I think if you give Aguero and Jesus and De Bruyne and Silva, who we hear is fine, if you give them that, maybe Sterling, who's in good form, they, they ain't going to be uh, as profligate as Arsenal were. But, but what we've seen from uh, City over recent weeks is against lesser opposition, frustrated to the latter stages of the game, to the last few minutes of the game. Now, United can probably feel, well, we can set up a better defensive wall, a better bus than, than everybody else in, in, in the league, and maybe that's the way we, we get something out, out, out of City. At the same time, I, I really thought, I, I was very impressed with United and the high-pressing game, albeit to start with against Arsenal, but you get a two, uh, two-goal lead, understandably, you start dropping a, a, a little bit deeper. I'll be very surprised if United don't do that from the start. If they don't start with two up front, if they don't start pressing City higher up the park and see where that, see where that gets it. A conversation about how United are going to play. I don't think. There's not really. And there's no point you... And I'm, some, I'm pre-empting this. There's no point even looking ahead to next Monday and saying... Well, let's have a chat about how Man United were boring. Because I don't think United fans, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, assessing where we're going to go with this because I don't think United fans care how they play in this particular but, game. And that's an interesting point because the, the, uh, there's, Maybe no, over the piece. there's no agenda. Uh, there was no way I was trying to lead this conversation. But you say really? that the fact that United fans don't care on this, but, uh, but they, you don't think they care. You think United correct. could get away with parking the bus because it's. I, 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 I think there's no expectation of a certain star because it's United no. at Old Trafford. I think over a longer term, probably, yeah. But over a one game against your near neighbours who are eight points ahead, I think if you give United a 1-0 win or a, a narrow win, they'll not be walking out of Old Trafford talking about the way they played. They'll be talking about the fact, oh, this City team 
are supposed to be the best things in sliced bread and are going to go and potentially win the Champions League and we've just stuffed them. I think that's what I, I, I think there are some United fans who'd care. I, 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 can, think of, I can think of quite a few <laughs> ex-Manchester United players who, who care a lot about how they play and, and, and how they win games. But there's a, a new breed of fan now who's only focuses on how many points they get and it doesn't really matter how, how they get them, which is, is not the United... I anyway, know, not the United. I, 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 saw, I saw Liverpool go to. Uh, uh, sorry, I saw United go, go to Liverpool with Fergie years ago, and and some of the games get battled. Mm -hmm. right? It hardly got over the halfway line, but because Ferguson played an expansive game, generally a lot of times he wasn't he wasn't sort of criticised for that. But I didn't hear anybody coming out then saying, "Well, that was just you know we we got a result at United, but we, it's not acceptable the way we play because they've done it before." I think part of his problem is going to be. If they lose this game by doing the usual Mourinho, yeah. that's the first thing mm -hmm. that people are going to say, right. particularly the fans. You know, if, if Manchester United win this game, you won't hear one fan complaining about how they went about it. And, and I think that, that's the thing, and in the comparison to, to the say, Alex Ferguson days, if United have a bad day or if they had a bad game and you find yourselves under the caution, you lose a game... You don't get criticised for that. But if this is how you play, nine times out of ten, sit deep, defend and hope to catch somebody on the break in the 85th minute, then at some point everybody's going to turn and, and start to criticise. And I think rightly so. The problem, the problem that, that United have is they're not playing against a back line that Arsenal had who, when United win the ball 60 yards from goal, can go 60 yards and just walk through. Right. Because Manchester City haven't been like that this year. They've been solid defensively. And if you're going to sit in the edge of your box or 30 yards from the edge of your box, if you're Man United, you've still got a long way to go before you score and you've still got a, a tougher job against City than you will have against any other defence in the Premier League. There's a lot of things you can mask with a, good, with a result, right? Yeah, sure. But, you know, and you can mask it. You know, you can mask 26% possession and you can mask stats if you get a result. Yep. Right, but as Stevie pointed out, when you play like that and things go against you, particularly against your, your biggest rivals and your neighbours and your nemesis in the other technical area, mm -hmm. by the way, who clearly there's a, an edge between them, then then that's when you get opened up. So it's, it's, and, and when people say, well, it's not just about results, absolute nonsense, it is. Guardiola has said that Davi Silva is a doubt for the Manchester Derby this weekend, but Jose Mourinho isn't buying it. Craig Burley is here with me. Craig, Mourinho says Guardiola is just playing mind games. Funny that's coming from a certain Jose Mourinho, but I mean, who doesn't these days? Did this ever happen in your day? Yeah, I was thinking about that this morning. Not for a long time, I have to say, but uh, mm. I can't, I can't, yeah, I mean, I think it's always gone on. Manager mind games. I mean... What difference does it make? Because you set, you, United are not setting the whole team up mm -hmm. for David Silva. As good a player as he is, right? They're setting the team up to, to win a game, not necessarily for one player, right? He's got more problems because he's got to worry about what he's going to do without Paul Pogba. And David Silva looked pretty all right at that end of the West Ham game to me. I can't remember if anything happened right at the end, but when he scored that goal, he looked okay. So, uh, you know... I, I, I don't see any reason for Pep to start lying about, about players. I mean, if anything, they'd probably say Kevin De Bruyne is struggling, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Fernandinho is struggling and, and the goalkeeper is struggling. So, I, you know, I, I'm not sure that's the case. It, it will have absolutely no bearing whatsoever in the game. But in terms of manager mind games on hold, like you say, they do go on. And, of course, if you were a manager, would you let these things affect you? Is it a tactic that I mean, actually think, does but, work? Uh, no. And it's nonsense, but managers are paranoid. But it gets under some managers' Man Managers skin. are paranoid, you know, and I know that for a fact because I've worked with so many and about team sheets. <laughs> team sheets are like the crown jewels where they keep them cold. Don't let them know. As if he's going <laughs> to make a difference because, you know, they're not going to pick a team. He's going to pick his team and he's going. the blue half's going to pick one and the red half's going to pick one. And when the team sheets come in, an hour before, around about, when you get them and the manager gets them and you swap them over, he's not going to say, uh, Mourinho, this is... I don't think he's going to say... I would have picked a different team if I'd have known that was happening. I, I mean, it might happen now and again, but it's not going to happen at the weekend. All right. Ronald Kalman, do you think Jesse Messi Lingard can be a threat to the City defence as well? Well, Jesse Lingard has been United's revelation for the last two games against Watford, against Arsenal, his pace, his energy. I think because he's a local lad as well, that obviously helps. You know, he's played in Dubs before. I think Lingard can be a threat and he could be underestimated by City. Second question from Basilati. When will Mourinho get criticised for not playing his players enough? Well, 
Luke Shaw's an obvious player that hasn't played very often for Mourinho this season. But the results suggest that Mourinho's right. You know, United are second on the table, and but for Man City's fantastic start, people will be saying that he's done a great job, so you can't really complain at his selection. Question from Chigoza, who are the key players this weekend? Well, for me, the key player was Romelu Lukaku because he had one goal in 12 games. He has to start scoring soon. This is a big game. He had a good record against City for Everton, so if Lukaku scores, United win. If Lukaku's poor again, City win. Question from Kake, is there a battle that United need to neutralise a certain player they need to neutralise the game? City have got so many players, Leroy Sane, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Gabriel Jesus, Sergio Aguero. There's too many players, you just have to defend as a team rather than one man to man. Question from Marlene, how will Paul Pogba's absence affect United's tactics? Well, Pogba's absence is massive for United. He's the one player they've got that can go box to box, create on the edge of the box, stretch the game. United don't have a replacement for him, so I think it could change Marino's tactics in a big way. Next question, United conceded 15 shots on goal against Arsenal, can they keep Man City out? Well, different game against City, United will go into it with different tactics. I think Mourinho felt that Arsenal could be got at a lot easier than City, so I think United will be more resolute and I think it will be a much tighter game and stifle City a lot more than Arsenal. OK, good question from Aklak, about Sir Alex Ferguson when he retired in 2013. Should he have done more to get Pep Guardiola to come to the club? Well, Sir Alex tried, he, went, he met Pep Guardiola in New York and Pep decided he's got to buy Munich, but I think Pep was always going to go to Man City after Bayern Munich because he's got too many connections there, so so Alex could try as much as he likes, he was always going to get David Moyes. Uh, question from Madusha, if City wins in the title race over, they'll be 11 points clear by Christmas, so I think that it'll take a real miracle for anyone, United top to catch them, so City win, title's over. Welcome to Extra Time, thanks for your questions, we'll get some in a moment. Shaq, we didn't have you in the conversation of favourite Christmas movie. Craig doesn't like them, he likes books, documentaries Elf. about South Korea. Elf is my favourite movie. South Korea? Favourite Christmas movie. Oh, North Korea. North Korea. Inside North Korea. Elf. Oh. Very Do they have Christmas in North Korea? Well, I mean, I can't. Right. <laughs> All I can tell you is some of these political things are actually quite interesting. But there's a reason I watched that. And why is that? Can't explain. I can't <laughs> explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's, there's a, a reason, reason I watched reason. it. Christmas Day last year didn't quite go to plan. Well, Let me just put it in the Burley household. What well, surprised you? What well, Christmas Day surprised you? <laughs> This is just snuck up in your What the tree? I came down the morning, there was a tree there. Oh, you went oh, on Santa just... coming down the chimney. <laughs> it was a bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got very emotional. Was drunk, it you? you mean drunk? Was it you? Drunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. And I was kind of. Well, Harvey. Yeah, on your own. Well, the dog was there. <laughs> <laughs> you and the dog. What should we do? Let's watch a documentary about North Korea. Uh, Stevie, do you have a Christmas Oh, and I forgot about the fire. What, what happened about the fire? Well, I forgot to open the flue at the top of the fireplace, and the, I set the fire, my wood fire, and all the smoke came in the house as well. It's a great Christmas you had. <laughs> and the smoke alarm was going off. Right. For, I mean, for a long time, I couldn't get it off. And the uh, aforementioned the person who had a difficult day knew nothing about it. Wow. After 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, Stevie, favourite oh. Christmas movie? No. See? The Beatles. Okay. It's Is Gab just... with us? Is he still here? No, he's gone. It's not right, just okay. me. Oh, that's fair enough. Uh, will a win for United reignite the title race, and will City retain the, dom their, the dominance against after... Oh, crikey, I'm going to do all that again. I'm sorry. Will a win for United, United reignite, reignite, reignite the title race, race. or will City retain the dominance again, again after the, the weekend if they lose? Hold the paper up. <laughs> right. What did you say that? Huh? Yes. Yes. Right, next question. <laughs> if you were a Bamiyang, how much money would it take for you to join a club as desperate as Everton? Bamiyang's pretty desperate as well, isn't he? Mm. He's not joining him, up there, anyway. No. Why not? Why is he? Wait, Bruce Dortmund aren't exactly top of the tree right now. No. But I tell you what, the miles ahead of Everton. Go. So why is he going to leave Dortmund to go to Everton? You you telling me, are you telling me Everton are going to give him more money? Of course, the Dortmund. Dortmund. Definitely. Anyway, forget that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aubameyang is going to look to go to some nights in the Champions League. But straight away, that rules Everton. Now. Right. But if he's going to move in Jan, if he's going to move in January, listen, he's not moving here, though. All right, just don't kid yourself. All right, Craig, do you have an opinion on this? No. Should Spurs try to get back Bale, and should Bale consider a return? No. No. I think Bale would go to 
on the United. Yeah. Probably. It's all about the ESPN FC Top 100. Gab Marcotti is joining me as we look at the top 10 forwards. Gab, we're going to let him sound off and see if he agrees with the order or not who's topped it. Now, we have separated forwards from strikers, from wingers, so we'll leave that for another day. But let's start off with right at the top of the list, Lionel Messi. Any arguments there? No, I think most people would argue with this. You could have top 10 right backs and he'd probably be there if you somebody put him in that category. Cristiano Ronaldo fans probably would argue with this. <laughs> no, but I think, again, if we're talking about right now contributions this season, you might actually argue about Cristiano being in second place. I think uh, you could certainly make a case for, for Neymar or, or even Eden Hazard, who are third and fourth, that they've contributed more you know, this season thus far. Um, Mbappe, I love. In the top five, to some come. say too much too soon. But to be fair, relative to these other guys, and you look at their contributions this season, I mean, look, Gareth Bale's sick now, so I'm not even sure <laughs> he, should, he should be there. Aryan Robbins, also been hit or miss. Maybe you could argue Robin Mbappe, possibly in the here and now. Gabriel Jesus has been, has been fantastic. I maybe even have him uh, a little bit higher. Thomas Muller, in other ones, had a really difficult time, had injuries. Rashford is an interesting one because uh -oh. <laughs> longer term, no argument. But again, we're talking about, you know, somebody who's really split his playing time yes. with Martial. And, and to be fair, that's fine. When you're at Rashford's age, that's, that's probably what should happen. You know, he's being used in different lear roles, learning different positions. Uh, so making himself useful to, to the team. So, yeah, I mean, it's just if I say I have a few issues with this list. And of course, and the way they're playing and, and the players they have and the performances and the results, of course, speak for themselves. So they can do it, um, but I don't think it's a be-all and end-all. Yes, they'd love to do it, but I think the biggest, the bigger picture is they want to pick the Premier League title up and who knows the Champions League or whatever, a couple, couple of other trophies. Um, that would be the probably Guardiola would be thinking, I'd rather do that than go the season unbeaten. I suppose if you go unbeaten, you'll, you'll do both. But, um, you know, I, I think he, he'll be thinking just get some silverware on the shelf and that, that's more important than anything else. We've on the ESPN FC transfer rater. We're going to start with a bit of a surprise one for me, Obama Yang, but to Everton. Stevie Necker, what do you make of that? Why? <laughs> <laughs> would be the answer. Why would Obama Yang leave Dortmund to go to Everton? Makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, I'm not sure where this has come from, but I'm sorry, don't see it. If he leaves Dortmund, what kind of level of club are you expecting someone like Obama Yang to go to? Well, he's going, to, he's going to want to go at least to a club who are involved in Champions League. Yeah. And the truth is, that ain't going to be Everton anytime soon. I don't think I'm the only one who, when looking at this next one, thought to themselves, Ings is still at Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Now, he's had this injury. He's, he's, he's had a lot of bad luck as well. His time has come and gone at Liverpool, hasn't it? Even if he gets himself fit with mm. regards to who's ahead of him in the pecking order. Yeah, yeah there's no question that uh, his... Well, he doesn't have a future at Liverpool. Um, he was signed, certainly, as a squad player. He wasn't signed to be in the starting eleven, I don't believe. And, of course, as you said, with his injuries yeah. over the last couple of years, I mean, he just needs to play again. Uh, and the only way he does that is to leave Liverpool. So this really is an absolute no-brainer. Danny Ng, for his own good, has to leave Liverpool. Jack Wilshire went to Bournemouth on loan. Does, is that a kind of message to him that, look... You might be a squad player if you want to stay at Arsenal, but again, just as you said with Ings, it's probably best if he goes elsewhere and plays. Um, I, think this is a, I think this is a little bit of a strange one because Wilshire, no doubt, before he went to Bournemouth on loan, probably rated himself pretty highly. Mm -hmm. uh, when he went to Bournemouth, he didn't exactly set the heather on fire uh, the way I certainly I thought. You thought he might stand out more. Yes, and I'm sure he did yeah. as well. So the fact that he is now going back to Arsenal and is now kind of gone back to the same sort of cameo role, I think he might be happy just to stay with Arsenal. You know, you would imagine somebody like him wants to play week in, week out. Mm. But I think he's seen what it's like a little further down, and I'm not so sure that he's going to fancy it. So I think he's going to stay. OK. Yeah. We could just change the name and, and forget the fact that he's been out on loan. Walcott and, and Arsenal as well. A frustrating player because so mm. much ability, and you're thinking... If you pushed yourself a little bit more, you could have been a regular. What, what's the deal with Theo Walcott and Arsenal? And is it best if he leaves? Um, under no, again, normal circumstances would tell you that 
you know, he's he's at an age now, coming up. He's coming up to his thirties. You th you would think a professional wants to play, but this guy has had a career out of stop, start, stop, start. Being on the bench, being on the field, uh, being injured. He's he's a guy that picks up a lot of injury as well. This is another one where. You only know the answer to this question if you know what's going on inside this guy's head. He's the only one that can answer it. He might be quite happy to stay at Arsenal yep. and continue to do what he's doing. It seems like Arsenal are happy to have him as a squad player. So, again, I'm not so sure this happened. Okay. I will throw in, if he does move, I'm going to say he goes back to Southampton. Otherwise, he stays where he is. Okay, I've left the best till last. Gone. <laughs> you think? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, listen, he made a statement uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, pretty much saying, you know, I'm trying my best, as you've see, already seen this year, when he's played, he's been fantastic for Liverpool. But you know what? I got an opportunity and I was disappointed that it didn't happen. That's basically what he's been saying. I would not be shocked if he goes in the summer. Um, and I don't have a problem with it this summer. I did last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought that the club had to make a statement that, you know, they were trying to get up the ladder. And that's what they did. They didn't let him go. Right now, Liverpool needs a defence. And the only way they're going to get that is by buying one. And the money from Coutinho is going to help them buy that defence. Uh, I like to the fact that without Coutinho, you already have a front three that looks pretty sensational. So I think it's time uh, that he... He goes uh, for his sake and for Liverpool as a club because, as I said, they have to buy a defence. Otherwise, Liverpool ain't getting a sniff at the Premier League title anytime soon. Strong words from a former Liverpool player. Come next summer, will continue to be a former Liverpool player. Chelsea look deadly in attack. They've been breaking scoring records in the Champions League, but a certain Thomas Muller from Bayern Munich isn't believing the hype, Craig. He says, yeah, PSG are good, but they're not that good, and everyone should really slow their rolls. Is this a bit of, you know, bitterness in there? Everyone seems to be bashing... They are bashing PSG. PSG because of... I know they lost to Strasbourg at the weekend, and, and then they lost again in the Champions League. They topped the group. But uh, you're not everyone worried. seems to be... Oh, not everyone, that's wrong. People, a lot of people jumping on, including our show. Dan Thomas last night was like, oh, what, what's happening with... With PSG, Should we I mean, be worried? It's a bloody game, for God's sake. You know what I mean? They could go there, as long as they avoid losing by four goals, uh, they top the group. If they lose by four goals, which was unlikely, by the way, they go into second place. And and hey, that's probably not a bad thing either. Either when you see how the groups are panning out. So, I don't think, come the knockout stages or the quarters or whatever it is, anyone will bat an eyelid about what happened in the last group game for PSG. Because when those players got off the plane in Munich from France, they knew that kind of job was almost done. Yeah. And so it's kind of difficult to get yourself up. So, I, you know, Thomas Muller and the rest, I understand, you know, they're, they're, you know, maybe there's a little bit of jealousy around for mm -hmm. some because, and I'm not suggesting Muller's jealous, but I'm just saying everybody's talking about PSG. And the proof will be in the pudding, right? The proof will be, you know, if they go out to... Man City or Real Madrid in the quarters of the semis. It's not because of what happened in Munich and match day, whatever it was, six. It's because on that particular day they've not been good enough. That's when we'll judge them. Not after some nonsense last game where people, oh, that was a great game. Oh, wasn't that exciting with Bayern? What? Did you see who finished top? Spare me. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, I don't, I don't see the big deal with them losing in this game when the job was already done, including a 3 0 victory against Bayern Munich in Paris when Ancelotti was still a manager. Still the top team for you. They're, you know, the players will be more focused when it gets to the crunch. I'm not saying that's going to be enough, but it certainly has no bearing from... It will have no bearing on what happened in Munich last night. Absolutely none. So a bit of jealousy from Thomas Muller? Possibly, but in the meantime, we're believing the hype and PSG have nothing to worry about right now.